Alright, so, it's time. Enter the mansion. It's time. Oh wait, that restarts the game. Alright, you're right. Dang it. Whoops. No vector kudu. <laughs> you know in Japanese, um, the game is known as Fatamaru. Really? Yeah. That's, a, that's its short name in Japanese. Inspect your memories. Mel, Mel would have liked the kiss if it wasn't for him realizing that it was his sister. <laughs> Shaking my head. Your hand in hers, the maid guided you back through the kitchen and into the tea room. Palms were still cold. You felt as though you were clen you were clenching ice. Yes. Master, do you wish to know the truth, no matter what may be hidden within, or if it is something you would be happier not knowing? Would you rather remain in the dark? Oh, is that so? He 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 he. I wonder about their father. Uh, yes, didn't the you get the answer? Haired. Yeah. I thought this game had choices. It does. Yes, the flaxen-haired sibling's father. Do you think he knew about the white-haired girl? If he did, then perhaps he allowed her to stay because of how deeply he loved his wife. Or maybe he did not want people to find out about her. I expect he to experience many different emotions. The pages of the, his story may remain untold. Their parents likely had a turbulent tale as well, but theirs is not of consequence. To whom? I could not tell you. You and the maid cross to the entrance hall, continuing your trek. And at some point, the fire in the fireplace had faded to embers, emphasizing the lack of light within the mansion. The maid took a candlestick and lit it in the cinders. The small flame illuminated her pale face. On a whim, you asked the maid about herself. About me? I am a maid devoted to your service, master, as, I've, as I have said. Oh, what was that? You are interested in my name? Hee <laughs> hee, you flatter me. I won't tell you. Also, I'm a witch, but you shouldn't know that yet. Uh, yeah. Straight up. Also, it would make me much happier to hear you say my name after you have recalled who you are, Master. A subtle smile rose to the maid's face, over which she began to lead you down a first floor corridor. Why does the maid just give me a quiz, like a multiple choice question quiz? It's like, <laughs> here, remember yourself. Is it one of these na names? Yeah. It's like Nelly, Mel, white hair girl. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, uh, we're on time for learning right now, dude. Yeah. Jeez. Anyway. And it reflected the warm light of the candle, which disappeared out of range shortly thereafter. Oh my, is something the matter? Did you come across something peculiar? Hee <laughs> hee. Made it not appear to the mirror. Though she was not the only one without a reflection. Uh oh. You reached the end of the corridor. There appeared to be a doorway, but the door itself was long since gone, leaving only a hole in the wall to frame the stairs behind it. Without hesitation, the maid descended into the darkness. You have more interest in this mansion, master, than in a mere maid, do you not? Though it pains me to say as much as in, in your presence, master, this house is cursed. Yes, it is a curse that runs deep. As you just bore witness to, the majority of those who join my name I have served here for many years, and periods of, of, ha of happiness are as fleeting as a sugar cube in a cup of hot tea. Why did such tragedies befall them? If I were to guess, Master, it's because you had not returned. But when you remember your true self, the mansion's curse should be broken. The next door is before us. It appeared to be the entrance to a cellar. The disconsolate wooden door was visibly rotten in several, several places, and it seemed to might crumble at a single touch. You could hear the sound of something devouring meat beyond the door. No, he's in the there basement. Was a, <laughs> maybe there was a beast living within. Before you had to say, had a chance to say, you thought it was dangerous. The maid opened the door with a chilling smile on her face. Your first impression was that it, it smelled like blood. Creature of the night. A vampire. The second door. Ooh. Seventeen zero seven. Why? But that's centuries apart from the first door. The mansion sat in rooms of that era. Not a soul resided within. The grandeur of the house was lost to the ages. It was in perpetual decline. Not a flower grew in the garden. Dust and dirt blackened the plaster. Cobbles blanketed the corridors. Ivy shrouded the outer walls. It was not a pleasant sight. As hard as I tried to fight it, I could not stop the mansion's descent into disrepair. The death of the previous owner's grief, or perhaps despair, was far too much. 
after the beautiful flaxen hair family who stayed in the beach. They had no heirs, so the bloodline simply vanished, vanished into the depths of the ocean. It had been about 50 years since the house last had a resident. The forlorn property appeared as though it had been abandoned for centuries, and the occasional villager who stumbled upon it did not remain there for more than a day. My time there was rather solitary. That was perhaps the loneliest time of my life. Everyone who visited the mansion feared it, and it was left without anyone to become its master. I even came to believe that my term serving as a maid would come to an end in this era. However, one day I noticed something out of the ordinary. As a servant of the house, I am almost immediately aware of any new presence within its walls. There appeared to be someone downstairs. Can you imagine just how delighted that was? A part of me was anxious about what kind of person I might find. The possibility that it, would be, it could be you had my heart a flutter. So resisting the urge to rush, I headed for the basement. The cellar was where red wine, smoked meat, and other preserved foods were kept. By that point, the wine was practically antique. As I expected, a man has made way, his way to the cellar. Is anyone there? Although I am sure to remember he was a man is entirely accurate. You gonna read that? <laughs> <laughs> oh my, this is quite something. Oh. A monster. The very first thing I sensed was one almost unbearable stench. The odor emanated from the man heightened by the food he had carelessly, carelessly rummaged through. Blood red liquid spilled from the wine barrel so before. His sunken eyes had a piercing wolf like glimmer in them. His teeth were sharp and yellow, visible as he ripped into a chunk of meat. He had grumbled in a seemingly un inhuman tongue. I was looking at a beast, or perhaps a half beast. There was another source of odor in the room. It had something of a quite kind of metallic tinge to it, and then I noticed this. I nearly passed out. The red liquid was not just wine, as I assumed. The beast I had I presume stolen a weapon from the village. A sword, far too nice for him to lay out on the floor by his side. I could hardly imagine how many people's lives he had taken with that blade. It was visibly wet from blood, even in the darkness of the cellar, but at the time, same time, it had an imposing gleam. The fine, luscious aroma of the wine could not mask the stench of the blood of the beast. Holding my breath, I took a few moments to ponder. Ponder what, O oh Master? You know. Tell me, were you summered here by the mansion? Wait, bro. Did you, like, um, get any spoilers since the last time? Like, did you happen upon any spoilers since the last time no, we read? I don't know anything. Read? Oh, okay, okay, good. Yeah. Did you come here knowing what kind of place it is? He he he. You are in want of money. You are welcome to help yourself to some of the furniture. I imagine the villagers will be willing to welcome you if you dress yourself a bit more like a person. And you can trade the furniture for food and make your way to a larger town. The wolf was able to fool the innocent little girl simply by putting on clothing and all. Oh dear, I was afraid you wouldn't understand. What am I to do? Quite the predicament. Nevertheless, it made a real, great deal to me that I had found someone who did not fear the mansion, maybe a human or beast. So I decided I should give them, him my assistance while doing my best not to agitate him. Say, could you perchance be not my new master? So have we been the beast the whole time? Is that why we're not responding properly? I can't hear you. Oh. I said, so have we been the beast the whole time? Is that why we haven't been responding properly? We've just been going rah, 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 whenever the maid asks us a question. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, do you remember yourself? And then we're all like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you can see a beautiful, clear, beautiful, clear sea through If the mansion had been in a proper condition, it would have been breathtaking against that backdrop. It, I even wanted to plant orange trees in the garden. It was quite a tumultuous era. The sun sh still shone bright upon the land, which only served to emphasize the house's unsightliness. Oh yes, perhaps I should give you more, some more background information. At that period of time, in time, a war had just drawn to a close. The once gorgeous wetlands were infested with crows, picking at the decaying remains. Bodies of soldiers fallen in battle continually washed up on the shores of coastal villages. People wanted nothing more than for the curtain to draw on that deeply political contest. And when it finally did, the kingdom, which with its richly fertile shores, was stripped of its independence, beginning a new era under new rule. People were 
exhausted, and their spirits wasted away, and the splendor of the ocean and sky did nothing to help. In my mind, the beast was emblematic of the times, emaciated and enveloped in the stench of blood. But the war came to an end. Thus the beast did not have to remain a beast, I thought. Did he? Oh, and also, you know what's weird? Um, it says the mansion is by a coast when it wasn't described that way. Um, in the, at the ro- when it was called the Rose Manor. Yeah. yeah. So, Strange. maybe the mansion... Yeah, maybe the mansion traveled somewhere, or maybe this is a different the mansion. Who knows? The, yeah. The yeah, possibly. First, I needed to do something about his appearance. I would draw a bath, scrub away all the filth, and dress in the clothing left in the mansion. However, having sat on use for 50 years, the majority of garments had been devoured by insects and were of little use. So I searched the mansion top to bottom for anything the beast could wear. I heated up some coals and set to work ironing what I found. At that time, Steam irons I had not been invented, and we used plates of iron heated with coals. They somewhat resembled kettles. I even prepared meals for this beast in order to teach him proper table manners. Although with a mansion in nearly uninhabitable state of disarray, there was only so much I could do in the kitchen, and the only supplies I had to work with were what was left in the cellar. As such, I was not able to put to use the cooking skills I had learned in the flaxen-haired family's time. Now, now, you mustn't eat with your hands. Do you want to get your fig- fingers and face dirty? You eat using a knife and fork. See? Like this. I feel like I'm teaching a young child. You gotta do the hee-hee. I'm not doing the hee-hee. <laughs> oh my, what are you holding your head for? Oh dear. He's like, he's like I want to eat you. Perhaps I should be <laughs> teaching you to speak before table matters. <laughs> Worry not, we have plenty of time. You needn't act so frightened. Or perhaps you do not want to be understood at all. Would you be so kind as to tell me your name? You are for now still a guest. It is too soon for me to call you Master. Or am I mistaken? Your name. That is what people call you. How about I start by telling you my name? I'm called... B.E. (laughs) B.E. Bistia. Bistia. Yeah. It means beast in a certain language. I think it might be Italian, maybe? My, you seem to be rather perplexed as to how I was still alive. He had, in fact, attempted to cause me harm. However, I am a servant of the house. The beast called himself Bestia. It is a curious thing. When I learned his name, he seemed to take on a new importance in my mind. He was not a mere beast, but the thing called Bestia. Master. Should I ever have the chance to hear your name, I'm certain you too shall become a more substantial in presence. But you must always remember, Master, that even if you do not remember your name, and if you, even if you never know mine, you have always held a special place in my heart. And thus began my tranquil days with Bestia. Slowly, he began to learn the human tongue, and I was, to be quite honest, rather thrilled. To be certain, I was afraid of the beast. My fear was not so strong as my elation that there was someone else in the mansion, someone to whom I could speak and someone that might become my master. Come now, you must pull weeds out of the roots or they will soon grow back. This is a task that requires perseverance. You do not like this, see? There you go. Grass. Grass. Oh, did you not expect that? What appears to be many plants on the surface is actually all connected within the soil. If a, if a maid was facing right, he'd be like, ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is a test that requires a man's strength. If there were other servants, they could do it. So I apologize for making you tend to the garden, future master. Or perhaps now that you're all dressed up, do you wish to leave the mansion and find someone to fool, as the wolf did the sweet little girl? Have you no interest in remaining in such a disheveled house? Neo Tokyo. 
Neo Tokyo. <laughs> this is my favorite game. This is my favorite video game. It's free on Steam. This is what Neo Tokyo does to MF. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, this is what no Neo Tokyo Friday does to you. Yeah, no. When the, when, when, the, when the mods don't turn on the servers on Friday. Yeah. Not want leave. Oh my, is that so? Hee hee hee. Good job. If you should stay, then I shall not stop you. On the contrary, I will gladly attend to you. I am waiting for the person who is to become my master. Forever waiting. I should be able to watch over you until the day you depart this world, old and wrinkled. Do you not believe me? Hee hee. Are you interested in becoming the master of this house? Will be. I have to wonder if you know what you're saying. Although it matters little whether you do or not. Oh my, look at that. Now this brings back, brings back memories. Oops. Ne next we're going to teach you how to brush your teeth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're going to give you something cool called eye drops. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro. I <laughs> yeah. This is what Zod does them. <laughs> no, this brings back memories. This is called a rose. You know what a rose is? is it, a it is a type of flower. Not no. Do not no. I, wait. I, I think I think the beast is Mel because he has bridge teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Then allow me to teach you. What you have here is not a real rose. The real rose is wilted and are sleeping in the soil. This is called an accessory. It is something women wear. The beast held an or ornamental right, white rose in his hands. An object someone sometime meant to give to someone else. Ooh, Curiously, so the white hair... One... Didn't the white hair girl drop it? Yeah. Yeah. Curiously, the white rose was just as stunning as it had been the day it was made, despite being buried in the earth for so many years. I hear it, roses make wonderful gifts. Hee <laughs> hee. He stared intently at the decorative rose. I presumed the beast would either discard it disinterest disinterestedly or destroy it. But much to my surprise, Bestia held it gently in his hands, as though it was something precious to him. Are you perchance considering giving it to me? Sir, you are not. Very well. Is there someone else you would like to give it to? In that moment, a thought floated through my mind. The thing I had found in the pool of blood of the cellar, cellar was a monstrous creature indeed, but perhaps that was not at his core what he truly was. So I asked him a, quest a question. What is it that you desire, Bestia? This mansion fulfills people's desires. If you yearn for something, want to eat Live. glass ornament. <laughs> Live. Why does glass ornament taste like Live. blood? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like iron. It tastes like blood. Look at that filthy thing. A beast. It's a beast. It's eating damn sand. Are you really that hungry? Beast, you foul creature. Stay the hell back. Get any closer, filthy beast, and I'll kill you. Several days passed by. As Bestia began to act more like a person, the mansion followed suit, slowly becoming more habitable, though not yet back to its former glory. No flowers grew in the garden, but neither were there weeds infesting it. The dusty corridors, shattered windows, rust-covered kitchen gradually returned to their proper states. Bestia learned how to change his own clothes and how to draw a bath. No longer did I have to wait on him head and foot. He would take care of a number of things all by himself. What we lacked for feud, he required from the forest. Never did he go to purchase supplies from the village. Rather, he captured hares and gathered herbs hidden in the overgrowth. They were days without incident. And though such a life may be want for excitement, peace is something that you mustn't take for granted. Those who have it cast it aside, finding the leisurely flow of time dull. Only those who have never experienced it truly know how precious it is. Bestia appeared to be content. He wore an expression of solitary serenity. Someone, is anyone there? And then one day a crack formed in the uneventful tranquility. Is anyone in there? Could you part with some food? I don't need much. Some food and water? Just a little. That's all I need. Bestia looked over at me as if, as if seeking my aid. Ironic, no? It was the visitor who was truly in need of aid. 
I pondered it for a few moments, deciding that I could not simply turn away something calling upon the mansion. At best he ordered me to not let him in, I would have followed his instructions, but he said nothing. <laughs> Who is this dude? He, he's freaking mugs all day and night. <laughs> I was afraid it was deserted. You said you were in need of sustenance? Y yes, it doesn't have to be much. Anything to quench this thirst. Got lost. It's been several days. Give me a few minutes and I will find. Let him in. Bro's <laughs> lagging. Yeah. He's, he's trying to figure out how to say the words. A firm, deep voice came from behind me. I was quite startled. When had the beast learned to act so much like a human? When had he learned to speak so clearly and to behave so much like a master? Ah, upon seeing Bestia, a look of terror, terror appeared to cross the wanderer's face for a moment. In my eyes, Bestia was the very image of a head of the house, but to an outsider, he probably appeared to be nothing more than a beast in man's clothing. Prepare him and be on a bed. I suspect he is quite tired. F thank you very much. Bro, he is locked in, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. But He's time... like, food, I must act like a man. <laughs> but in time, the fear drained from the man's face. Bestia sat precariously on the border between man and beast. Though he still had his doubts, the wanderer revised his first impression, deciding Bestia was human. As the wolf had fooled the little girl in the forest, he too had succeeded in playing the role of a man. I thought I was a goner for a while there, but you really came to I the read rescue. That. Sorry? I read that as gooner. <laughs> <laughs> I, re I, thought <laughs> I thought I was a gooner, gooner for there a for a second. second. <laughs> and a meal like this on top of that? You really didn't have to. Though I guess that is not the appropriate thing to say as I'm eating. Haha. <laughs> what kind of meat is this? Human. Hair. Human. Hair. Hair. It's damned tender for a rabbit. And here I thought it was beef. You have quite the skilled chef. Hee 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 hee. Oh, is she the one who cooked this? Is she your wife? Oh no, I'm merely a servant. A female servant, huh? Don't see that very often. This mansion is just full of surprises. I can hardly believe it. Lost for days, and as soon as I think I'm dead, there it is. Thinking back on it now, it's miraculous. But why are you two living alone in the house on the cliff? We... We... Oh, I beg your pardon. I'm asking so many questions without telling you about myself. My apologies, just a little too excited to finally see other people. I'm a merchant. I do international trade. Until a few years back, spice exports pretty much all came from one place. But now that we've established trade routes of our own, my country's fighting tooth and nail to push its exports. And in fact, some have lost a few teeth in the fight already. That's just how it works. It's a cutthroat world. You do what you must to, to survive. That's just how it works, the merchant said, a sorrowful look on his face. He was quite clearly putting on a show, though. Confidence in himself and his homeland radiated from that man. I came to this, tame cab. I came to this land to do business. But much to my chagrin, I somehow landed up lost in the forest. I'd have wandered around for much longer, and I've lost the chance to ever see my beloved again. Your beloved? Your beloved? Bro, bro just imagine Bestial just sitting on the couch, which is like legs spread and his arms like on his legs, <laughs> yeah, staring like, at him like, <laughs> while the guy's there eating. In, like a suit. Just yeah. Like, this crazy, <laughs> yeah. insane beast. Bestial yeah. Yes. Sir. What would you do if you were the merchant? Would you be like, oh, this is fine, I can eat? Or would you leave? Uh, I'd probably leave. Probably leave? I'd, I I, 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 I'd be like, I'd, I'd ask Bestial, like, I, can I take this to go? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I'm constantly out on business, so we only get to see each other a few times a year. But she always waits for my return. I'd like to introduce to you to her if I ever get the chance. She's a pretty girl, if not especially striking. Is that so? Is that so? The merchant was a man of many words, and I, for one, do not mind a lively supper table. Though I do not know how best you felt, at the very least, I'm glad. I was glad that he, we had invited the wanderer into the mansion. He was, after all, holding a proper conversation with someone, and he seemed to be having success concealing his piercing, beast-like gaze. However, all right, I stopped by the village before entering the forest, and I heard a bone-chilling tale there. As soon as the merchant brought, brought up the subject, a palpable tension spread through the room. They say there have been sightings of a beast. It's a creature unlike anything that anyone's ever, ever seen before. Not a wolf or a bear or anything like that. The merchant's just trying to avoid being racist. <laughs> It even attacked the village once, killing several people. Thankfully, the men managed to drive it out. But the creature is still alive. There's nothing in this world scarier than a vicious beast. So you should keep an eye out. Wouldn't want to accidentally let a murderous beast into your home. 
At the villager's insistence, I had the smithy forge me a knife. Is that knife? Huh? With you now? Well, yeah, I've got it on me. Only good to defend myself with, but it's better than that knife. You brought that knife. You're here to kill me with that knife. What? You're going to stab me and again and again with that knife. Like they did last time. That's why you're here, isn't it? What? What are you talking about? What's gotten into you? Stab and stab and stab. <coughs> Could calm down. What are you so worried about? I'm not going to hurt you with this. What? What did you just say? Ah! Ah! I like to imagine that before the wolf ate the poor little girl. He said, "Is this what I always look like?" That beast. What's your problem? What's wrong? Talk like a human. Is me. Stop! Stay back! Get any closer and I'll stab you to death. You act like you only just realized I'm a beast. Eek! That's right! I'm a beast! I killed them! Stay back! And I'll do the same to you! In his hand, Bestia held his sword. Perhaps it had been hidden on the table, or maybe hid behind his chair. Regardless, it was as though he had expected this to happen. The merchant kicked aside the chair. Attempting to flee, Bestia closed the distance in an instant, knocking him back. He lost his balance and slammed against the wall, but he still made to escape, though the beast stood blocking his path. No, no, please stop this! Don't kill me! My beloved is waiting for me back home. I can't leave her behind. And why should I care? A dreadful scream echoed throughout the dining room. I reflexively covered my ears. Please help! Ah! Someone! Anyone! No one's going to come for you. This mansion's a long way from town. Ah, help! That woman! Where did she go? Why isn't she here? She was just... Ah! You'll kill me if I do no don't kill you. And so I must show you that I will. I must show you that I'm serious. I must kill you or you won't understand. You just won't understand. If I don't show you firsthand, you just won't, won't understand. I'll make you understand. I'll make your flesh and bones understand. I'll kill you. Kill. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Kill you! Ah, he's, he's dying. Yeah. Monster. That's right, I am a beast. Bro enjoys this. Yeah. Did you know that the authors were um, confused as to why door two was so long compared to the other doors? Then they realized it was because of Bestia's laughs. <laughs> I I'm not even kidding. Dang. They had been enjoying it. And a peaceful meal around the table together just a minutes earlier. So what had triggered this? If I were to guess, the merchant saying the word knife is what caused the beast to snap. A simple, small thing to set him off. I could not comprehend it. Bestia, who had said he wished for peace, was staring down at a ravaged corpse of the merchant with a look of ecstasy on his face. Master, can you understand how he felt? Even just a little? Did he not yearn for peace, but for slaughter? Is it the maid's laugh? What? <laughs> Alright. That does it for today's shopping. <laughs> oh, this is going to be her, isn't it? And now the moment we've all been waiting for. Snack time. There's nothing better than having a ham sandwich in the park. Oh dear, maybe I should lower my voice when I'm talking to myself. Wait, you, you said who's going to be who? 
It, I didn't hear. Sorry. This might I be the confused. merchant's beloved. I could be wrong. With. Oh. <laughs> the the mog shirt. The mog shirt. <laughs> but it's so Wait. Nice th what? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Just keep reading. <sighs> but it's so nice out. I just can't help myself. Does the weather have anything to do with talking with oneself? Not important. Food, food. If he were here, it would taste even better. Yep. I wonder when I'll get to see him next. Pauline! Pauline! There you are. Mm. Oh dear, what's got you so frazzled, Mom? Ah, oh Pauline. Wh what is it? Did something happen? What's the matter, Mom? Mom. Pauline. This isn't like you, Mom. It's not like you at all. Tell me, what happened? I told you to stay away from men who trade. Huh? Oh, Pauline, my dear daughter. Why must God be so cruel to such a sweet girl? You're hurting me, Mom. Don't squeeze so tight. What's gotten into you? Listen carefully, Pauline. You must be calm and hear me out. Understood? Your lover, the beloved man you wait for, is dead. Uh -oh. humanity began slipping away from him after that encounter. He had returned to the thing I had found in the cellar. Actually, he probably mentioned Saul's looking, for more, looking more barbaric than ever. Despite all the effort he had put into learning to act like a human, he now ripped the velvet curtains off the wall, howling shrilly, stomping back and forth through the hallways and ravaging the garden. I watched him intently, though, from a distance. Mestia was not merely a beast, but an out-of-control, bloodthirsty beast. Just a few days ago, we had been tending the garden together, but that was no longer possible. I was quite disappointed. Eventually, Bestia discovered my hiding place. I had not felt regret in a very long time, but I felt deep regret in that moment. More! Don't have enough. Not enough. I need more. I need more. I must satisfy these urges. Are you saying peace was not enough to sate you? Did I mishear you when you asked for peace? I was mis I was mistaken. Asking for peace won't solve anything. Blood, despair, eyes filled with terror. These are the things I need. And I've always known it. You said this mansion fulfills people's desires? Then, then. Give me prey. No more hares, live humans. Why did I ever teach him to speak human language? Before long, the mansion granted his witch. Once a week, a villager or a traveling merchant from somewhere would water into the forest, and ending up at the mansion on the cliff. Though something felt suspicious about the man who greeted them at the door. On the surface, he looked like a proper nobleman. So they all eventually chose to trust Bestia. The mansion had an air of loneliness about it, but it was adequate to provide rest for their weary feet. Food and a bed, and most comforting of all, there were other people. The lord of the house treated the lost souls like esteemed guests, poured them fine wine, and had me cook for them. No one suspected in the slightest that he was a beast. He put on a reasonably convincing act, because yes, I taught him how to behave like a master. The visitors all went to bed contented, but it says I'm sure you can imagine, master, they would never see the light of day again. All of his visitors, all of his visitors, visitors always are all like, um, oh, Bestia is, um, he's kind of eccentric. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of eccentric. He's a bit of an eccentric, yeah. eccentric, eccentric coach. nobleman. Yeah, yeah eccentric much guy. Yeah. This the penetratingly bright sunlight, particular to this area. A beast! It's a beast! You disgusting creature! You hideous monster! Kill him! If that's how you humans want to do things, then I'll play your little game. I'll play it even better than you. I'll kill you. I'll slaughter you! No, please don't! That's it! That's it. Cry for me. Beg for your life. Pray for my mercy. Weep and struggle and suffer and die. No one understands. No one can possibly understand my despair. What did I ever do? Was it just because I'm a beast? When did I become a beast? Why do beasts have to die? Beasts are savage, and so they must die. I'm a beast, therefore I am savage. 
which case, I'll kill them. I'll show them what makes a beast so terrifying. Whose side are you on? <laughs> <laughs> Moonlight crept through the torn velvet curtains shining down upon the blood-soaked beast. It was a sight that would incite terror in anyone. Look at this. No one can stand up to me. Humans have no chance against beasts. More. I need more. Give me more prey! The mansion continued to save the beast's demented craving, sending not one but multiple villagers into his claws, into these bloodstained walls off which echoed his monstrous howls. Stop, please, I'm begging you to spare me. Sorry, I'm not familiar with your god. Beasts have no need of gods. I have a wife and son back at the village. Please let me return to them. Why don't you bring them back to me? I'll send them to the same place you're going. I, I am with child. Please let me go. Are you now? In that case, I'll kill the baby first. You damned monster. That's right, I'm a monster. By killing, no one can define me. I have to show the world that I, that beasts are the most frightening things on this earth. The beast began to change his style. Style, making sick, making sick banquets out of his kills. Banquets. Some days he would tie his guests up, to, guests up in the cellar, playing with them for hours until they finally died. Some days he would drain them of their blood and bathe in it. Some days he would spread them out on the table and feast upon them. Every week another atrocious party. He did everything imaginable. As a faithful servant of this house, I'm confident I can do almost any, most anything I'm asked. But you can surely imagine my surprise at having to use the cooking skills I learned while serving the Flex and her family to do that. I can only wonder if it actually tasted any good. Pestia's peculiar sword was always with him for his twisted mankins of self-gratification. However, much blood stained on it, it never lost its sheen. It was as though the sword drank through the love and flesh of humans. Master, can you imagine just how wretched I felt? mansion, once a beautiful sight to behold, reeks of death and acrimony. The, scent, the stench of rotting flesh seeped up from the cellar. Even the years it spent forsaken and in ruins were preferable to that. Perhaps I only had myself to blame. It was I who had invited the beast into the mansion. More! More! Not enough! This isn't enough to satisfy me! But Bestia still sought to hold more of his first parties. Lost villagers were no longer enough to quell his urges. He was indeed a genuine beast. And in time, this is what he began to wish for. Can't you get me any better, prey? Something truly exquisite. The perfect prey to quench this maddening thirst of mine. Do you know? Get Nick a avocado. <laughs> yeah. That's like that's that's like food for weeks. Yeah. <laughs> for months, you could be snacking. Yeah, years, out. ten years. <laughs> All the McDoubles and chicken nuggets he's been eating is just, yeah, just perfect spot right here. Yeah. Do you know what he meant when he asked for the perfect prey master? Perhaps a hero, someone courageous enough to stand up to him, whom he could enjoy a battle to the death. Perhaps a dazzling young nymph to satisfy, to satisfy his other primal urges. Or perhaps what he wanted was not human at all, but a demon, or a phantom. I would soon find out as the mansion attempted to grant his witch, bringing yet another guest to the house on the cliff. He's like pretty messed in the head for being like a monster, you know? Yeah. Maybe he's a demon. Something like that. If or maybe. Devil, or may or or maybe. If the devil, he is uh yo mama. <laughs> if the devil guides us. If God guides us, then perhaps I could accept that this was fate. Then it makes sense that I'm here. Is anyone? Is anyone there? I've lost my way. Would you please be so kind as to spare me a little food? Ah, there. There it is. There comes the poor little offering. They never learn. They just keep coming, again and again. The mansion keeps granting my wish. I would be glad to provide you some food, and you are welcome to stay the night. Get some rest. I will have a room prepared. 
What? 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 What the sigma? Then I suppose I should take you up on your generosity. I've been wandering for a very, very long time. What was that, Master? You recognize her? I imagine you would. That white hair, those red, red eyes, skin the color of freshly fallen snow. That flawlessly beautiful visage, you cannot possibly mistake her for anyone else. And no, it is not someone who happens to resemble her. I can understand why you'd be surprised, Master. At first, I could hardly believe my own eyes. The wanderer knocking on the door that day was the same, very same fair-skinned young woman who visited the mansion so many years earlier. The white-haired girl must have spent many, many a night in the forest. Her crystalline skin was covered in red scratches from where she had brushed against stray, stray, stray branches and tree bark. She had even lost her shoes and was standing there barefooted, looking quite disheartened. Perfect. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> it did not make her any less beautiful. In fact, you could just imagine the dense forest canopy parting to allow the sun to shine down upon her. The beast appeared surprised by her angelic beauty as well. It seemed as though all the madness drained from him in that moment. He said nothing, but his eyes told all. He was entranced by the sight of her ruby red irises and her pure white hair. Pardon? He's like, he's like, awooga! <laughs> awooga! I, I'm a beast. This is what I asked for. Something to quench my thirst. You're allowed to be happy. But as I said, it was only for a moment. So rejoice. Imagine just how gratifying it will be to see such a beautiful woman writhing in the throes of death. Follow me. I will have a breath drawn as well. And once the moment had passed, the beast was barely able to contain the wellspring of madness within himself. He wanted nothing more than to run his sword through the white-haired girl at that very instant to torture her, to defile her. He tended to her wounds, served her supper, and drew a bath for her. Afterwards, the beast even made it to provide her with a dress to wear. Even the outfit she had only worn for one night so many years before was there, waiting for someone to put it on again. For her to put it on again. He said she could choose anything she liked. She, being such a modest young woman, said she needed not of such fine attire. And what a shame that was. I too wish to see her in a dress once more. I need not such fine clothing. You need be modest. No, no, that's not why. Are they not to your liking, then? No, I just... My apologies. You are very generous. Foolish girl, smiling and calling me generous. I was simply imagining what a pretty sight it would be. The sight of her fresh blood spattered on it. The sight of her life slipping away in it. I'm glad that after watering for so long, I ended up here in this mansion. She already has drip. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest. And in a few hours, you'll be feeling the exact opposite. Get all the rest you get all the rest you need. I shall see you again in the morning. I thank you. She's too nice, bro. <laughs> Bessie then made his way out of the girl's bedchamber. His mask came crumbling off of him after only taking a few steps. There, that's precisely what I wanted. Ah, just imagining how such a beautiful woman will scream. How she'll beg for her life. Hey, hey, are you there? <clears throat> Hold up. The mansion, <clears throat> the mansion has given me the perfect offering. Hey, hey, is she not here? Someone there? Yes, I came by to ask if there's anything you needed. I cannot offer you anything extravagant, not like before, but I'm here to provide you with anything in my capacity. I appreciate the offer, but I need nothing. Being allowed to stay the night is more than enough. Do you work here in the mansion? Yes, indeed I do. I've been here for a very, very long time. Very long time? Um, you might think this is an odd question, but have we met before? Something about you seems familiar. And I get the feeling I've been in this mansion before. Yes, we have met. It was quite some time ago, though. When was it? I, um... It was an unimaginably long time ago. Do you remember a boy and girl with flaxen hair? Flaxen hair? I apologize. My memory fails me. Do you not remember me, either? I see. You should probably not push yourself to remember that. 
there were joyous times, but there, there were, were even less, there were less than joyous times. But would you be so kind as to answer one question? What might your name be? My name? My name is, what the freak? I see, so you are, <laughs> again. <laughs> again? You should get some rest. I'll make tea for you in the morning. Also, go on, close your eyes. But best you never waited for one to come. <clears throat> With the sword that smell of, smelled of blood hanging from his hip, the beast slowly, ever so slowly, crept toward the room where the white haired girl, girl slept. The time was soon approaching for the bloodthirsty beast to paint the walls with the young woman's blood, to turn her bedchamber into a gourd spattered altar upon which he would offer her to the devil. However, when he opened the door, the beast could hardly believe his eyes. She was not asleep, but sitting there as if expecting Bestia's arrival. Why are you awake? Did you not go to sleep? I heard footsteps, so I... And what were you planning to do when I got here? Surely you didn't think we'd simply have a nice midnight chat. I was hoping to ask what it, what it was that you wanted. To ask what it was I wanted? Do you even realize what you're saying? Can you not see what's in my hand? You know exactly what I came here to do. <clears throat> Aren't you going to beg? Aren't you going to plead for your life? Aren't you going to ask me not to kill you? If it's necessary. But is that what you want? What I want is much something much more gratifying than your pleas. I want to hold a banquet. It's not enough. No matter what I do, it's not enough. But you, you will be enough to satisfy me. To quench this unholy thirst. To completely, wholly fill me to the bursting point. You want to know what I desire? I desire to devour you! Ah. Beast just shoved the girl back, slamming her into the mattress. He then stabbed his sword through the sheets beside her, looking down upon the girl, the moonlight at his back. Clenching her slender throat with one hand, he drew his sword once more, holding the tip at inches from her nose. No matter how much blood it drank, the sword continued to shine gloriously, as though it had just come from the forge. It was an awe-inspiring, tear-shedding blade, the sight of which would cause anyone to imagine the misfortune about to fall the fall them. Go on, mock me! Ridicule the hideous, barbaric beast standing before you. From the moment you saw me, you thought me unsettling, no? But you averted your eyes. Because I have food for you. Because I gave you a place to rest. You pretended not to notice the beast. This is retribution. Retribution for you damned humans. So beg for your life like you, they all do. Cry. Plead for, plead for mercy. If you say, if you say that you're ugly, then I must be equally ugly. What? What came from the girl's mouth was neither a plea, nor an insult, nor a scream. Full-grown men had wept before him, yet this slight young woman did not. Despite this terrifying beast being upon her, moments away from extinguishing her life, even I almost shrieked in fright. The best he can, could believe neither his eyes nor his ears. Do, do you not fear me? Can you not see what I'm about to do to you? What am I to be afraid of? I'm threatening to murder you! To rip your intestines out with these claws and watch you die in agony. <coughs> <coughs> those those low pitched voices are making your throat die. Yeah. Beastie is ripping out your throat right now. Uh huh. The beastie of voice. I enjoy it more than anything in the world. Filling others' hearts with fear. The more lives I take, the more I enjoy it. I'm a beast driven by madness. What he expected was for the beautiful girl before him to desperately implore him for mercy. He wanted nothing more than to see despair seep into every corner of her red eyes, for he believed that it would be, tr be truly a sublime moment, euphoria unlike anything he had experienced before. Bestia prodded her with a singular sword, poking a slit in the skin smooth and slow. You mean to take mercy on me because you see me as pitiful? But she did not do as the beast wished. She looked up at him with sympathy rather than fear. This rattled the beast. He had never once seen anyone respond to him that way. What, what possessed you to say that? What on earth is going through your head? Mercy? Mercy? Do you not comprehend the situation? How can you be so calm? 
Scream, cry and shout, beg for me to spare you. Throw yourself at my feet. Throw yourself at my feet. Otherwise, I'll... Hold up. I'm a beast. That your throat's like, please help me. <laughs> a beast. I need water. Of tires <laughs> of killing. <laughs> to me, you appear to be a person. You, you're lying. You listen to the things I say, and you respond with your own words. I was taught. I was taught how to speak. I, I'm a beast who speaks human language, but you think. But you think. You use your mind to come up with. Uh, responses, and you hesitate. If 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 I if I'm human, then why do they disparage me so? Why do they reject me and try to kill me? Because I'm a beast, a repulsive beast. That's why, isn't it? I I will do nothing to hurt you. We are alike. Uh, alike? Don't be ridiculous. How can you say we're alike when you are as beautiful as you are? There is nothing beautiful about me. What value does outward appearance have? Y you You have suffered much persecution, which is why you tremble in fear. I I'm not trembling. I'm not afraid. I can hear the cries of your heart. What, what on earth is wrong with you? Why are you not afraid? Why do you not scream in terror? I am afraid, but more than fear, I feel like I now know what my role is. Y your role? If you will have me, then I would like to remain here in the mansion. Are you mad? I will eventually kill you, torture you, put you through hell, make you wish you were never born. That does not change my mind. Please allow me to stay. I find it very hard to believe that what you want deep down is to hurt people, and I get the feeling that I am meant to be here. That is my. That it is my role. Yeah. Messia was at a loss. He was. Perhaps, He's gonna fix him. <laughs> He's gonna fix. I'm going to fix him. I'm gonna. Fi I'm gonna fix him. <laughs> <laughs> I could fix him. He was perhaps afraid of this girl who did not fear him and even attempted to embrace him. She behaved too differently from all the other humans he knew of, who only ever harassed and pushed him away. But why are you so kind to me, to this beast, this murderer? Bestia's sword slipped from his hand, hitting the hard floor with a metallic wine. Sword. When the sound died down, the white-haired girl extended her hands for the beast with the utmost of affability. Her fingers were white as freshly fallen snow, something this area never saw. They traced his distinctive frame. They ran along his unusually shaped nose. They slid across his rough, yellowed skin. They drifted around his rather small eyes. The beast trembled once more, this time not out of twisted desire from deep within, but from unimaginable comfort of physical contact. Her fingers moved so gently, so pleasantly, wrapping them, wrapping him in their warmth. Are you crying? A single teardrop slid down the arc of her finger. Looking into her clear eyes, Bestia came to a realization. And at the same time, he felt somewhat dismayed. You are without sight. Taken in the throes of his primal urges, the beast had not noticed, but there was an emptiness in the girl's eyes. She appeared to be gazing far into the distance, not focused on the man despite being so close enough to touch him. Tears had begun running down Vestia's cheeks earlier when she had called him a person, but it was not until one of those droplets had slid across the back of her finger that she had realized she would indeed have no need of, of, of extravagant dresses. After all, she could not see what she was wearing. That is correct. I am blind. But whoever decided that reality is only that which can be seen? I know not what appearance I have. In the darkness, everything is as one. There is no difference between beast and man. If you are a beast, then I too must be a beast. To call the girl a beast would be paramount to eating sugar and insisting it was salt. Do pardon the trite analogy, please. But you know rather well, Master, that the white-haired girl was not at all what you would call a beast. Not simply in appearance, but all the way down to her core. There was nothing beastly about her. Her words brought him faint pain, but the beast still felt on some level that he wanted her to keep to keep her at his side, to see what would happen. His next words were in large part impulsive. Uh, I am grateful that you cannot see. Ah, uh, this is what a beautiful relationship. <laughs> Without <laughs> so exception. Wholesome.
Everyone who had wandered in the mansion had lost their lives before the, for before the sun rose the next morning. She was the first visitor that had not met this fate. Over time, Bestia's madness gradually, subsi gradually subsided. It even began to seem rather tame. You would hardly believe it was the same beast who had he once reveled in his perverse festivities. He was, I imagine, at a loss for how to behave. I too would be flustered in the constant, pres cons constant presence of such beauty. But it was not just her appearance. She said she had to wish to live with him, a beast who had committed countless atrocities. Perplexing indeed. What is the matter? Do you honestly no, do you honestly not fear me? Do I appear to be afraid of you? No, no, you do not. But you would, if you could see me. You would react the same as everyone else. You would mock me. You would despise me. You would want to kill me. You don't know what I've done, because you can't see. I enjoyed it. I basked in the terror. So why? Why do I not want to, you to find out? I don't want you to know how many people I've tortured, how many I've slaughtered, how much blood I've, I've, I've imbibed. What does imbibed mean? Like, is that like eat? Like, yeah, like taken into oneself. Yeah. All oh. the horrible, thing, horrible things I've done. Horrible. I'm, a, I'm aware what I've done is wrong, but I relished in it. I wanted for so long to slaughter them. I desperately desired to see blood. Human blood. What is it I crave? Murder or laughter? I said that I had no for, need for peace, yet here I am. Is something the matter? No. Uh, some tea. Oh, shall I make some? Are you thirsty? No, I made some tea. It's probably cold by now. I thought you might want some. Y you don't? No, no, I'll take it. Hee <laughs> hee. What are you laughing for? She's like, why does this smell like blood? Because <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> it, is it to your liking? It's bitter. Life together began quietly, their days without event. They had no extravagant meals, there were no swaths of guests lending life to the mansion's halls. But there was also no one screaming, screaming in fear for their life. It was the peaceful life Vestia had lost, and he had returned once more to that quiet realm. What's the matter? You are always so quick to notice my presence. My world is one of darkness, so I have a heightened sense of hearing. What is it like? How do you perceive the world? I cannot imagine living in complete darkness. Occasionally, I can see light. Light? Yes, not a radiant light, like the sun, but a soft light floating in the darkness. Like a candlelight, I suppose. That, that only perplexes me all the more. I find it difficult to understand what you are describing. Is that so? It's difficult for me as well. I'm not sure how to explain it. But it's not complete darkness. I can sense your presence, for instance, and I can tell how windy it is from the way, way the windows vibrate. And also, 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 I al also feel as though I can sense the wavering of emotions. The candlelight seem, begins to flicker erratically from fear, intense sorrow, or other similar emotions. I'm an empath. <laughs> I can feel what you're feeling. Yeah. My emotions? I do not know. It could be yours and it could be mine mansion is a very peculiar place. The candlelight is always wavering, and yet it seems somehow stable. It makes me feel as though this is where I belong. I don't think I understand. I'm a beast, so I lack the intelligence. But you? I'm going to go hunting. Is there anything you would like? Whatever you like. Oh, uh, human meat? <laughs> Lunch? <laughs> Even? All right then. Um, if you find any fruit, that would be nice. Fruit. Aha! It is sour. You picked it before it was ripe. I, I didn't know. Is that a bad thing? I don't know anything. I cannot see, but if fruit is still green, you are not supposed to eat it yet. What color are these? Green? No, blue. Sorry, I'm not vegan. <laughs> Shall I give you a hand to prepare, preparing supper? I cannot ask for help of someone who can't see. You'll hurt yourself. Don't worry. I can tell for the most part where things are by touch and sound. Are you worried? Worried. 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 I thought of blood dripping down her finger. 
doesn't excite me. What's going on? What on earth happened to me? If I appear to be in any danger of harming myself, please let me know. Then you have nothing to worry about. You do not seem any more comfortable in the kitchen than me. She always cooks the... Where did she go? Huh? She always comes when I call. Interesting. I had hidden myself away. Bestie had learned how to get out by his daily life without my assistance, and the two of them had no need of others in their peaceful world. Oh my, what is the matter, Master? Hee <laughs> hee. I was not lonely at all, no. It was an absolute pleasure simply watching them. I mean that. It was not my role to be at his side, nor was I the one to be at hers. Bro, do you think the maid's like at, on like the ceiling with like our, our hands and arms <laughs> spread out? Yeah, so like she a can like, look down and be like Spider Man. <laughs> yeah, that'd be <laughs> freaky, dude. If yeah. she could make Bestia into the master of the house, then my presence with presence was unnecessary. I appear when I am needed, as I appear to serve the flax and hair family. Nothing more. If they sought a servant, then I would show myself. Yes, certainly. After some time, they began to sleep in the same bed. Oh dear, no. Not for the reason that you're imagining, Master. You thought, no such thing? Hee hee. Though they slept, yeah, like slept. <laughs> Though they slept in the same bed, they did not lay together. They did so, it seemed, because they were more comfortable in the same place. The two acted more like family than lovers. Hey. Hello? Are you asleep? No, I am awake. Is the candlelight, wa is the candlelight wavering? Right now, it is very calm. I see. Say, tell me about your childhood. What? Me? Won't you? Won't you? My childhood? Yes. I have no such t stories to tell. When I was a child, I lost everything. My mother, father, brothers, everyone. So I... For as long as I can remember, I did not have a father. I lived alone with my mother, but I never felt like that was a bad thing. Was she kind? Yes, very. She was a very compassionate woman. But we were poor, and because I cannot see, my mother was the only one who could work. She would be away for long stretches of time. Supposedly, she, is serv she served in a respectable house. What? 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 I do not know whether or not that was true. Perhaps she was doing much more demanding work. I had never asked. I believe not asking was best for her. From time to time, I would receive letters from her. Someone who lived nearby read them to me. The letters went something like this. Life in the mansion is difficult, but everyone treats me so well, and they say I do good work. I'll be back with more money soon, so you be a good girl. Other than that, she allegedly expressed concern for my health and safety, as well as repeatedly saying uh, how much she loved me. You have a good mother. I did. Nearly everything I remember my mother saying to me was written in her letters. So, so much kindness and warmth. Why do you not live with her now? How did you end up here in the mansion? Before long, she lost her life at her place of employment, and I was sent the money she had earned. It was, I imagine, enough to survive on. When my mother was alive, she often lamented my blindness. If only you could see, she would say. I could show you just how extraordinary this world is. Yo, what? Oh, never mind. So I decided to visit a renowned physician in order to fulfill my mother's dream. A physician, uh, <clears throat> a physician in, in this country. However, upon examining me, he said that he could not restore my sight. Dejected, I was on my way back home when bandits attacked. They robbed me of the money I brought to pay for my treatment. I lost everything my mother saved for me. The money she gave her life to earn for me. I failed to repay her for everything she did, which, which cast a cl dark cloud over my heart. Our world has always been wrapped in darkness, but at that moment, I was in the deepest abyss. There was not even a speck of light. I was at a complete loss. With nowhere to go, I simply wandered, with no destination in mind. And that was when I mirac miraculously arrived at this mansion. It was as if it had summoned me there. You were being summoned by the mansion to fulfill my craving, but it didn't end up that way. I wonder if the mansion is disappointed. I see. I apologize for not having a bright tale to tell. Imagine you were hoping to heal joy, joyful childhood memories. No, 
Did they hurt you? Oops. Pardon? The bandits. When they attacked, were you hurt? You are so compassionate. I am no such thing. I am not compassionate. I was perfectly fine. I took a few scratches, but nothing you need to worry about. I see. I believe that I am happy now. I was unable to regain my sight, and I have the money to return home. But I believe I left in order to come here. In your, is your life right now happy? I am terrified. I'm volatile. I am growing accustomed to this woman's comfort. I'm afraid of losing her. A beast should not have these feelings. A murderous beast. Take this. What is? It makes a good gift, supposedly. I was planning to throw it out when I learned that. But I couldn't. I felt like I was meant to give it to someone. That could only be you. It is a fake white rose. A white rose accessory. Do you not want it? No, no, I do. I just, for some reason... Never mind. Thank you. I appreciate it. He's so, he's so nice. What a sweetie. Yeah, he's a sweetie. He just gave her something for free that he didn't want. Do you not desire more prey? But you were so hungry for blood before. I've had enough. I don't need it anymore. Although she is blind. No, because she cannot see. She does not push me away. She's the only one willing to accept me, to be with me. So hard to please. You obtain peace, cast it aside, and then pick it up once more. You'll never be able to escape it completely. After all, you were enchanted by the flesh of murder brings. You have, you have been for a very, very long time. This time, this time I'm done. I won't kill anyone anymore. Being with her is far more satisfying than the joy Kelly brought me. To be with her is what I truly want. So very self-centered. You certainly are. Hey! It was as though he was viewing a flashback. The sound of knocking echoed throughout the mansion, as it had the day the merchant came and brought the be short-lived peace crashing down. What did I just tell you? I do not want any more prey. Stop this. Stop it. Don't bring me any more. I thought you were supposed to fulfill my desires. Why did the door open? <clears throat> Sword in hand, Bestia ran through the mansion's halls. He was overcome with fear. He had obtained the peace he so dearly wanted and even found someone who did not fear him. He was terrified that the appearance of more prey would cause this all to crumble. If he spotted the prey, murdered them, and conceded to his madness, she might choose to leave him. As much as she claimed he was not hideous, if she witnessed him doing that. I'll just chase them out. I'm done with this. My desire has changed. However. Ah. Ah! What? What? Why? Why? Bestia shuddered in terror at the sight. Whoa, what? Uh oh. S stay back! Stay away from me! He broke into a run. He was. It was not, after all, helpless prey that entered into the mansion. That... that thing is... The monster's voice seemed to slither along the floors behind him. He felt as though if he were to turn around, it would be right there on top of him. Why are you chasing me? Bestia shouted with fear in his voice, uncharacteristic of the beast who had so readily slaughtered his prey. But can you blame him? That... that's... a bestia! In that moment, I had an epiphany. I had assumed he had called himself Bestia, unaware of what the word meant. A bestia other than me. Bestia is not in fact a name. It is a word that means beast. Indeed, a second beast had come to the mansion. What? Why are you chasing me? Are you here to kill me? Is it because I settled down? Because I wanted to stop being a beast? Ah! Is something the matter? When the white-haired girl poked her head out of her bedchamber, Bestia was aghast. 
He frantically attempted to return her to her room. You, you mustn't leave your room. But he was doing this. As he was doing this, the horrifying creature, no, the beast voice, voice drew near. Um, do not open this door for any reason. I will, I will protect you. That's right, that's right. I don't want this piece to be destroyed. These tranquil days together with this woman. I will protect them. I will. Trembling in fear, Bestia gathered his resolve. He pointed his sword, which until then had only been used to torment others, at the second beast. Now he would wield his blade to protect the person he cared about. This was the same beast who had killed and killed and killed so to satisfy his own primal desires. I will not let you destroy this. I will protect it from you. From a rational point of view, the things he was saying and feeling were rather idealistic. But Bestia was desperate. He did not want to lose this piece. Before long, the beast, the one chasing him, appeared from within the darkness. Say, Master, resolve was the only thing necessary for one to act courageously. Would that not mean nearly anyone could become a hero? Mistia had viciously slaughtered so many people before. He had gathered the courage to protect the kings and the things he cared for. But now he was shaking. He did not gall gallantly bring his sword down upon the approaching beast. Instead, he trembled visibly from head to toe. He must have been quite terrified at the beast's appearance. Stop! No! Stay away from me! Don't! Stay back! Seeing Bestia so scared, I imagine the beast thought it was a prime opportunity for it slowly, ever so slowly, ambled toward him. Ah! 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 If I don't kill it, it will kill me. I have to kill it before I have to kill it. 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 And that was the moment Bestia's mind ran off the rails of sanity. Kill! 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 He lifted his sword above his head, facing the approaching beast. And ferociously, swung it down upon his assailant. Again and again and again. Screaming horrifically at the top of his young lungs. He continued swing after swing until the other beast had gone completely still. Before long, copious volumes of fresh blood stained the corridor. At some point, the other beast had stopped moving and sunk into a pool of its own lifeblood. Uh, I had not imagined either that the beast could still be alive after shedding so much blood. S stay back. The beast reached his hand out toward Bestia. It was determined to drag him down to the underworld, it seemed. Slowly sliding around, along the slippery floor, it dragged itself toward him. Even on, on its last breath, it continued reaching for Bestia, fixated on him. He kicked the beast's hand, beast's hand up into the air, staggering it, and then he... Burn in hell! Rammed his blade down on, into it. it. Isn't it kind of ironic he's attacking another beast? Yeah. After doing so much bad stuff, you know? Mm hmm Bestia's fear-stricken expression was hardly that of what a knight had... Uh, of a knight who had just saved the maiden. Nevertheless, he had indeed eradicated the other beast. You should save. All right. So, um, it seems like someone, maybe possibly the maid, maybe like trying to manipulate him some way, because you know, what he's wishing for. Earlier. There's some weird like reincarnation stuff going on here. Yeah, that's what I think. Anyway, anyway, he's like, yeah. <sighs> All right, you come back again, okay? Promise me, I'll be waiting, waiting, believing that you'll return. I'll be waiting. You know, I think I think these stories aren't connected in the slightest, and the author's just writing random stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, this isn't Malinelli. What the hell? Uh, I gotta go, though. Oh. Yeah.
gotta go to Did the you store save? before it closes. Yeah. All right, cool. <clears throat> so, what do you think of that? What do you think of Door Two so far? Interesting. Very interesting turn. Yeah. I wonder who the beast is or what the beast is really. Yeah. Truly. Because there, there are two beasts. Yeah. So, that's, you know, kind of strange because, you just. Because so far the story has had like allusions to supernatural elements. Yeah. But now, but now it's like the white hair girl's back like hundreds of years later. The maid yeah. is back hundreds of years later. It's like, got, like there's no know. question that there is that there isn't you know supernatural things happening here. Yeah. And then now you got these monsters roaming around. Yeah. There's definitely some some shenanigans happening. And there was implication of shenanigans happening in the last door anyway. What do you mean shenanigans? Like about the children as well as the uh um like the white-haired girl, the maid especially. Yeah. It, it, it's always so weird how the maid sees everything, you know. Yeah, definitely like uh like a uh, like a spiritual force of of some sort. Yeah. All right, I got to bounce.